when the world is controlled by corporate interests. There are no accidents. The time is coming. The signs are beginning. The seals are breaking. The day is approaching. tell you that when I don't have it on, I feel naked. I mean, I literally feel like I've left my backup gun at the house, or I'm not wearing my vest. What's your name? Eric, come here. Let me see you. Eric? What? Put your gun down. Put it down. Put it down right now. Put the gun down. Put the gun down right now. Put the gun down. Put it down. Now. Put, Put the gun down. Put the gun down right now. Put the gun down. Well, 
he's got his gun is pointing at us. Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. Get him up where I can see him and I'll get you help. I mean, in my particular case, you just have no clue how much that means to me. I mean, my, I'm so much, uh, I'm not even worried about the civil suit. I'm not, I wasn't worried about the criminal investigation. It's facial recognition software. It takes a 3D picture of every face, checks them against the database we keep here at the watch office. Let me tell you, they are very meticulous about inventory. Every barcode that leaves at origin is tracked at destination or all hell breaks loose. The only way someone could do it would be to remove the contents of the boxes without being detected and leave the barcoded containers in the truck. You know what I'm saying? Technology called Shot Spotter confirms its gunshots, the rapid fire of a drive by shooting. Those noises were, in fact, from a drive by shooting, and the Shot Spotter system was able to tell police dispatchers how fast the car was moving, on what street the car was moving, its precise location, and that there were, in fact, two people shooting. At its headquarters near Santa Clara, California, ShotSpotter makes sensors that listen for gunfire and record any gunshots. And even map out right where the guns went. <laughs> And so if we look at this kaleidoscope of life here, you're recognizing the differences by looking at an analog gradient using sight. We're proposing that that system works rather well with small assemblages of species, but as the number of species that one is dealing with rises, uh, it runs into problems, and that we have to look at creating an identification system for life that's based on a digital character set. And so here you see uh, a DNA barcode a 650 character line of DNA sequences. And uh, for the balance of my talk, I'm going to be focusing on the evidence that this approach works and just talking to you a little bit more about uh, the problems and the opportunities that come with creating uh, a DNA-based identification system for life. So DNA barcode, what is it? Uh, it's a short system. It's based, uh, uh, we're trying to develop the most parsimonious system possible to tell organisms apart. A single DNA read is the cheapest currency in, the, in, the, with, in our business, and uh, 650 base pairs is what current technology will deliver. Standardized, 
it's critically important that we focus on a single piece of DNA across the spectrum of life. If not, you've got to know if you've got a beetle in your hand or a fish in your hand uh, before you could select the gene region. So the idea is to standardize on a, drive a single genic railway gauge.